a 226% improvement in cognitive capacity. That's what this represents here. Now, this is probably one of the most underreported medical breakthroughs in recent times, research-wise at least, for a couple of reasons. One besides having a 226% increase in cognitive capacity, you notice the control group, the ones that did not get the benefit of these particular scents, actually declined over a six month period of time. Now you're looking at your verbal scores and you're looking at a different one called diffusivity, which represents the uh, basically uncinate uh, fasciculus, which I'll elucidate you to in a few seconds. Now, what makes this medical breakthrough so incredible is we're not looking at the consumption of generally a medicine per se. We're looking at basically utilizing the olfactory sense, which has basically direct input into one of the few, actually I think the only sense that has a special privilege of being connected directly to memory is the olfactory sense, where the other ones have to go through gatekeeper, basically the thalamus itself. So what happened was this, what was done was this, done was this. The study participants, what they did is they smelt a different essential oil each night before they went to bed. So it was either rose, rosemary, lemon, lavender, orange, eucalyptus, or peppermint, seven. So you can imagine Monday was rose night, Tuesday was rosemary, and Sunday up to lavender, you get the picture. So basically a different scent every night, which stimulated the olfactory sense and therefore would work with the memory. And that passive approach over a six month period of time, two hours as they dozed off, yielded a 226% increase in cognitive capacity. Now, can you imagine, all of you did is you had like a nursing home, retirement home, or any sort of senior care living, uh, that all you had to do is basically rotate each scent on a different night to yield that benefit, and it's not a medication or drug or special diet. That's an incredible, incredible, useful, inexpensive, intervention which can yield benefit for millions of people when you think about it as a whole. Now I want to get to the reason for that in a few seconds. So what you're looking at is this chart here. You see the big red line, that's the, the people taking the essential oils or smelling the essential oils, not taking, please take that back, smelling the essential oils. And also then you have the oncinate uh, fasciculus, fasciculus uh, which sounds complex, but you'll, I'll explain more in a second. And you see that incredible benefit in diffusivity. And that's amazing. So without further ado, let's get right into the basically the details of why they hypothesized the benefit was so incredible with just basically smelling for two hours as they dozed off rose, rosemary, orange, eucalyptus, lemon, lavender, you know, no, and peppermint. You know, no essential order per se. So let us begin as follows. So here we go. Sweet smell success, simple fragrance method produces major memory boost. Irvine researchers into delving their aromas while sleeping sparks 226% cognitive increase. When a fragrance wafted through the bedrooms of older adults for two hours every night for six months, memories skyrocketed. Participants in the study by the University of California Irvine neuroscientists reaped a 226 increase in the cognitive capacity compared to the control group. The researchers say the finding transforms a long known tie between smell and memory into an easy non-invasive technique for strengthening memory and potentially deterring dementia. That's their words, not mine. Why? The olfactory sense has a special privilege of being directly connected to the brain's memory circuits, according to the professor. And to move forward, all the other senses are routed first through the thalamus. Everyone has experienced how powerful aromas are in evoking recollections, 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 even from very long ago. However, unlike with vision, changes that we treat with glasses and hearing aids for impairment, there's been no intervention for the loss of smell. Now, before I give it away, do you realize even the stimulation with the, the uh, essential oils at night can restore olfactory sense per se? Let us begin. The what? Scientists have long known that loss of olfactory capacity or ability to smell can predict development of nearly 70 neurologic and psychiatric diseases. Researchers have previously found that exposing people with moderate dementia up to, 40, up to 40 different odors 
twice a day or a period of time boosted the memories and language skills, eased depression, and improved the olfactory capacities. Henceforth, this is why uh, the researchers wanted to bring it down to something which could be easily simplified, hence the seven essential oils. All right, before I proceed so you get a good grasp of the territory we're heading into, here's basically a Google AI pick. The Uncidae fasciculus is white matter tract in the human brain that connects parts of the limbic system to the frontal lobe. The UF plays a role in memory encoding, retrieval, emotion regulation, processing novel information, and self-regulation. I know it makes you think about self-regulation. What else can we do here? It also connects the orbital frontal cortex, which is involved in face encoding, processing famous names, the temporal pole, which is crucial in naming people. Well, it's much more than that. But that gives you an idea right off the bat of where this is heading. But to proceed, this is why it's important and not to lose hope. The loss of olfactory ability and the deterioration of cognition. Even chronic sinusitis has been shown to be associated with increasing gray matter and brain regions associated with learning and memory itself. That's why the olfactory sense seems to be underappreciated. It is something which really is required to maintain a lot of those neural circuits. And you can read above, per se, in regard to gray matter, other ailments, for example, that could result in loss of smell, that can also be correlated with loss in gray matter. And now these things begin to connect. So olfactory stimulation restores olfactory function. That's amazing. Olfactory enrichment changes human brain anatomy. Olfactory enrichment improves cognition in humans. And the increased complexity of olfactory enrichment remarkably improves dementia. And that's going to make reference to the study that was alluded to prior into the 40 different odors. In this case, again, we're only dealing with seven. The study intervention. Individuals assigned to the olfactory enrichment groups were provided with the odorant diffuser. I'm not going to give any names. And seven essential odorants. Again, rose, orange, eucalyptus, lemon, peppermint, rosemary, and lavender. Not going to give any names, per se. It says they were asked to turn on the diffuser when they went to bed, and the odorant was released into the air during the night for two hours when they first went to sleep. They rotated through the different odorants each night. So again, rose could be Monday, orange Tuesday, eucalyptus Wednesday, lemon, peppermint, so on and so forth. And they did this. Participants were instructed to change their odorant bottles daily before they went to bed, and they continued this regime regimen for at home for six months. Now, again, doesn't that take you a large stretch of the imagination to basically see some of the rotates every night, which basically diffuses each unique scent uh, on a daily basis and how incredibly wonderfully passive and powerful that would be. To conclude, it is possible, to quote of course, that high levels of olfactory stimulation are protective for the brain and that the symptoms of the neurological disorders only become evident while olfactory stimulation is low. Perhaps this overreaching influence of olfactory stimulation and neurological function underlies the remarkable finding of multiple large perspective studies that the olfactory ability predicts, predicts all cause, all cause, a New York accent coming out, all cause mortality. Quoting, it is therefore maybe appropriate to begin envisionary, visionary, envisioning olfactory enrichment at a low cost public health program to reduce neurological risk in older adults. Again, can you imagine something so incredibly simple that just rotates a scent every night, whether it be rose, rosemary, to reiterate, uh, lemon, lavender, orange, eucalyptus, or peppermint, just for every night, and at least for a six month period of time. Who knows what happens when it goes further? And you could actually restore olfactory function on top of that. So it's like one of these things where basically it's one of the few scents, I should say, uh, senses where you're actually improving the function and therefore you begin to have a collateral or cascading effect where things may end up without any publisher bias, get better and better and better. This is the type of research which is groundbreaking. This is the type of research that can make a huge difference in a multitude of lives in a very passive, painless approach that can yield incredible, incredible societal benefit never mentioning even the reduction in the overall cost to the system, as well as basically improving people's well-being overall and not making the aging process see some um, 
challenging. Again, gratitude to the researchers. Incredible. Uh, I really appreciate it. I thought I was just going to run through a regular, you know, aromatherapy article, but no, this is so much more. And I really encourage you to basically validate the information which I present to you because the research is just enlightening in regard to how powerful this particular sense truly is in regard to our well being. Gratitude. I'm happy you watch or humbled you watch and look forward to see what you and I discover next week. Catch you next time. Bye.